friends and artists, Mrs. Gordon here. I'm so happy to see you. Uh, this is the last week in February, and so it is our last week uh, for our Artist of the Month, Clementine Hunter, who I did not know a lot about before I started this project and over this month, and I have just learned so much about her. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed some of the videos about her. I cannot believe that she made over 4,000 pieces of art in the last 50 years of her life. She was a self-taught artist and she didn't start making art until she was 50 and she lived till she was 100. And during those last 50 years, she made 4,000 pieces of art. Good for you, Clementine, you inspire me. Um, so let's take a look, you guys have uh, oops, what's going on here? Hold on, here we go. You guys have seen how she's drawn pictures of her everyday life um, in Louisiana, doing hair, the outside scenes, fishing, right? She also made wonderful still lifes of zinnias, which she did over and over again. And I love this one because it's starting to show that she has this fascination for chickens, which show up in some other places. And you might have seen in some of the work that we've looked at, chickens popping up in the strangest places. Um, so this one, the chicken became um, like a vase, right? And here's her, uh, her signature or her tag, Clementine Hunter, CH. And here she is taking a chicken on a walk. And this just tickled me to no end because I thought, how awesome. <laughs> I've never thought of doing that to take a chicken on a walk. So then that got me thinking about if I were going to take draw a picture of me taking something on a walk, what would it be? Would it be a giant chicken behind me? Hmm, let's find out. So this is our project today, friends, for you to draw a picture of yourself taking something unusual on a walk at the end of your leash. Maybe it's a chicken. Um, maybe it's something else. We'll talk about that. But one of the things I want you to notice is that Miss Clementine Hunter paid a lot of attention to something which was turning geometric shapes, using geometric shapes to create more complex organic shapes. So maybe she used like an oval here for the body of the chicken, maybe a triangle for its tail, maybe a triangle for its neck, maybe a circle for its head, and then she added some details. Similarly, she probably, it looks like she used kind of an oval for the upper part of her body and a triangle for the skirt and rectangles for the legs and put it together to make a body shape, maybe oval for the head and added the hair. We're going to be focusing on doing that today. And then I cannot wait to see what you take on a walk with you. You know, is it a whale? Is it um, a dinosaur? Is it a chicken? Is it a bird? Some other kind of bird? Is it um, a giant cat? You know, <laughs> Is it a shark? What are you going to take on a walk? Is it a cupcake? Maybe you take a cupcake on a walk. Who knows? So let's find out. Let's go ahead and get out of this and the fabulous Clementine taking a chicken on a walk. So here is my example that I started with. And it was, I took a cardinal on a walk. So I love cardinals, especially this time of year. Um, and I drew a picture of myself taking a cardinal on the walk. Um, and I feel like it's kind of like a mountainous scene. Um, so let's talk a little bit about how you can start this drawing and how you can finish it. Um, you'll need a piece of paper today. Remember, you can use um, uh, paper bags. Uh, you ideally want it to be black, blank, sorry, not black, but you could have like a lined piece of paper if you don't have any art paper at home. Or like I said, I really do love a paper bag for drawing on because then you can get some really good color too. Um, so... The first thing I kind of started with was me, all right? Um, and I started by drawing like a shape for my torso. So I just kind of drew like an oval shape. 
right? And then I knew I wanted to be walking something. So I, I kind of drew myself first without clothes and then I added clothes on later. Um, and then I kind of had a rectangle for the top part of my leg and a rectangle for the bottom part of my leg and kind of a little shoe shape. And then I was walking, so I knew I wanted one leg bent. And then this back leg, I just made kind of like a rectangle. And then I added a foot there. So that's kind of how I started my walking, like I was pulling something. And then I added a little rectangle for a little square for my neck and a little oval for my head. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I didn't want to deal with my arm coming out, so I just kind of put my arm behind my body there. And then this other arm I had reaching out, so kind of a rectangle reaching out for my body, and I added like a little oval at the end. All right, so that was my basic body shape, right? I had my, drew myself leaning forward, so I did the oval at, a, at an angle. But if you wanted yourself to be standing still, just like holding whatever is on the end of your you know, leash, that's fine too. Then you would do it more straight up. But I wanted the idea that I was really walking, kind of pulling something alongside me. So once I had my basic body down, then I added some hair. Now I turned my head like I was like I was looking. So I'm just adding some kind of like the shape of my hair. Maybe I want to do my hair pulled back in a ponytail. Maybe I'm like out for a workout with whatever I'm drawing on this next one. So maybe I want to draw my hair kind of in a little ponytail back behind my head. And then I'm just going to draw my eyes and I'm smiling. It looks like I have pigtails. All right. And then I can kind of really just kind of draw in my neck and I'll add some clothes now. Thank goodness. I'll add a little bit bigger than my body, like a shirt. That actually kind of looks like a shirt there. So I'll just keep that. I kind of added a shirt and then maybe I'll have I think I'll just do pants. Maybe it's in a colder wet weather. And then I'll just erase my lines inside. But that really helps me figure out where this kind of looks like how I look this morning when I took the dog on a walk, hair pulled back. Actually, I had a hat on my head. Maybe I want to make this winter. I could make it a coat. Um, or I could just add a baseball hat to my head. That would be okay too. That might work. There's my baseball hat on my head. All right. So now I'm out on a walk, pulling something along behind me. What am I pulling behind me now that I've got? And I just did a simple face. I didn't worry about, like, actually making my eyes, like, the shape of my eyes. And maybe I'll make my hair a little zippier there. Um, so now I'm going to add, before I add my leash, I'm going to draw what I'm taking for a walk. Now here I took a giant bird for a walk, giant cardinal bird. <laughs> uh, let's see what I could draw. I kind of love the idea of taking a cupcake on a walk. So maybe I'll draw a big cupcake and maybe I'll put it on wheels, like a big cupcake on wheels. Otherwise you'd just be dragging a cupcake. So I'm gonna draw the bottom of my cupcake. I added the zigzag line, I'll add some vertical and diagonal lines in here for my wrapper, my cupcake wrapper. And then I think maybe I'll do, <laughs> this feels like a metaphor for life, taking a cupcake on a walk and I'll add some wheels to it. And maybe I wanna add a face to my cupcake. Maybe it's a happy cupcake. Maybe it's a grumpy cupcake because it doesn't like going for walks. I don't know whatever you think. Maybe I'll add a cherry on top. I think I'm just going to leave it that way. <laughs> I love this. Like, ugh, I really don't want to go. So then I need to add the leash. I didn't add the leash before because I didn't know where I wanted to add it. So now that I have my cupcake drawn, I'm going to go ahead and draw a leash. Once I have me, right, or you, once you have you and your whatever you're taking for a walk, whether it be a giant bird or a shark, um, or a dinosaur, or I'm trying to think of what else you might take on a walk. Maybe a maybe a really big lizard, or a shark, shark, or a panda bear, or a polar bear. It's up to you. 
Um, once you have, then you're going to just go ahead and add your background. So remember, uh, Clementine Hunter liked to draw things outside. So I'm going to draw the path that I'm on. Uh, I just kind of did like a wavy line. And then I'm going to add a horizon line behind it. That's where the sky meets the ground. And maybe I add a tree. Right? Add the little roots of the tree. Uh, and maybe there are some clouds in the sky. Okay. Um, of course, I'm going to want to finish this up somehow. I'm going to want to color it in. Um, one of my favorite like speed methods for coloring things in is like if you're coloring in a big area like the sky and you want to get that colored in. Like I would probably color in my cupcake in just a regular way. Dismissal at Pennell Elementary. So I could color in my cupcake the regular way. Um, and it's going to be a lemon cupcake. And maybe I'll even add a lemon in it. Maybe that's why it's cranky, because it's a lemon and it's sour. And nobody likes lemon cupcakes. Actually, I think I would love a lemon cupcake. Um, but my favorite method for coloring in big areas like the sky is to peel the paper off a crayon, use the side of the crayon, and rub to create your colored in sky. And if you do this last, you can go right over what you colored in, and it won't be a problem. So friends and artists, I hope you've enjoyed learning about Clementine Hunter this month of February. Um, I loved that chicken being taken for a walk, and I can't wait to see what you take on a walk. Send me a Schoology message. Take a picture of your work. Let me see what you do. Don't forget to complete the Google um, Quick Check at the end. And have fun making some art today. Happy art making, friends and artists. Can't wait to see you soon.